uh, the command for the ladies is this. In like manner also that a woman, women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered, ha broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. And here's the theme, here's the key for how a lady is supposed to be. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. And so a lady is supposed to arraign herself, not with things that draw attention to the outside, but with draw attention to the inside. And the standard here is modesty. She's supposed to be a modest person. She's not supposed to uh, be showing off the superficial, but she's supposed to be showing off that inner godliness. The same thing as a man is supposed to do. And But we find here in verse 11, a man, we need to just, just go ahead and sit up and pay attention to this because it's important. Verse 11 says, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Oh. Now I want to tell you that when I preach this passage of Scripture and I'm preaching to men and I'm preaching to ladies, I don't talk a lot about subjection. I don't talk about submission a lot in our church. And I'll tell you the reason why is because what mostly is understood about submission is not the Bible or what the Bible teaches about it. The Bible teaches headship in the home. It teaches that men are the leaders of the home. And it teaches that God has placed them in that position. But I just want to tell you, and I just want to uh, call on you to be a witness of this, and that is that there is not usually uh, ladies in submission in Christian homes in our churches today. And I'm not talking about those churches, I'm talking about this church. Usually it is not men that are leading in holiness in the home. It's usually not men that are striving to uh, make, or that, that are the leaders in the home. And I want to tell you that it's a real problem, and it's not a problem with the women. It's a problem with the men. And if you men are not holy, striving to live a quiet and peaceable life, and if you are not constantly in prayer as so that you have no wrath in your life and you're not against something, and so that you are uh, not doubting, you know what the will of God is in your life, what is the will of God in the leadership of every home for a man? The will of God in leadership of your home is holiness. Holiness. And friend, I want to tell you, according to this passage of Scripture, you have got a major responsibility, a major burden to be holy. Matter of fact, it goes on to describe it in the church. It says, uh, verse 11, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man, but be in silence. Now, now, let me read to you in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14 very quickly. Um, Continue thou in the things, this is speaking to Timothy, which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who taught Timothy? Who taught Timothy before Paul did? Look at verse 15. That from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. His grandmother and mother. His grandmother and his mother. Now, I would point out to you in context this morning that... According to 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15, the things that Timothy had learned, he'd learned from godly ladies. And Paul is not telling Timothy that women can't teach and that they cannot train. But Paul is telling Timothy that in the church, there is a responsibility for men to be the teachers. You know why that is? That is not a put down on women. That is not against ladies uh, being able to be godly and being able to be holy. No, friend, it is instead a challenge to men. That's a challenge to men. Hey, I've been in churches that were run by women. I have. And I'll tell you, men don't like to go to those churches. You go to church and you'll find out, boy, it's all ladies there. All ladies there. And when you want to do something, you better talk to this lady or that lady. And if you don't get her approval, it's not going to happen. I mean, the ladies, ladies are running the churches. Why are they running the churches? Well, because they're the ones that are faithful. They're the ones that are doing all the work. They're the ones that are praying. They're doing all the things that men are supposed to be doing. And I want to tell you, those churches are rife with dispute. They're rife with problems. And the reason for it is because men aren't what they're supposed to be. Now, I just want to point out to you a couple of things this morning. First of all, let's read on all the way through this about uh, why it is that, that men are supposed to be the leaders and the teachers in the church. First of all, Adam was first formed, then Eve. And here is a first per second principle. In other words, this is, this is a listing which is different than many of the times when things are listed in order. This is an order that is emphasizing first then second. And the idea is men are to be the leaders because Adam was formed first. Eve was just as formed, but she came from Adam. 
but the man is supposed to be leader because he's first. And then the second thing it says about Eve is that Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. And here is an illustration that you may not like and may not think is very kind, but the illustration simply means this. Eve took the leadership, and the result was transgression. Eve took the leadership, and the result was transgression. Had Eve followed Adam's leadership, and had Adam been the leader he was supposed to have been, there would have been no transgression. But Eve gets alone. She makes a decision for herself. Listen, don't try to say Eve didn't know it was sin. Half God said, yes, God said, and not only that, but he also said, we're not supposed to touch it. Eve knew the law. But Eve got in leadership, and she made the decision to lead, and her decision was, you know what, I think it'd be a good thing to know good and evil. And I don't mean to be unkind today, man, but God did not make lead ladies to lead. And when ladies get in the leadership, friend, they do not have the God-given discernment and discretion that they ought to have. But I'll tell you something, if you won't lead, they will. The question to ask about the garden is, where was Adam? Where was Adam? You say, there wasn't any sin yet. Adam wasn't there. And had he been there, and had he made a decision, friend, things would have been mighty different. Now, I'm not going to get hypothetical. I, listen, God had a plan before the foundation of the world. I understand that. But the passage of Scripture here is teaching that man was not what he was supposed to be, and so a woman got in a position she should not have been placed in. And the result of it was that she led. Now, I want to say something to you men. You better lead your home. You hear me? I want to tell you something. Here's what will happen if you let your wife lead your home. She is not going to have the God-given discernment that he commanded you to have. And you're going to be out busy fighting the good fight for self and playing with your toys and focusing on things that have no eternal ramification and your wife is going to take the God-given responsibility that belongs to you and she's going to have it dropped in her lap and she's going to make wrong decisions and rather than lose her, you'll follow right into sin. I don't know how many men in our church we've lost because they would not lead, our, lead their homes. Hey, listen, over the five-year period that we have had, uh, that our church has been here, we have had men that wanted to be good men. They wanted to go to a church like this one. And their wives said, you know what, we don't want to go there. You know why the wives didn't want to go there? Because the men hadn't been men up to that time. And they had not led their home. And the result of it, friend, was this. The ladies were having their authority threatened. You go to a church like that, and if I follow my husband there, he's going to be the leader of the home, and I don't trust him as the leader of the home. Hey, he, he doesn't lead in prayer. He doesn't have a family altar in our home. Um, he wants to all of a sudden go this direction, but he's never been that direction before. All he cares about is his little hobby and his interests and so on and so forth. And he doesn't involve us as a family. It's his thing, and he wants me to follow that, and I'm going to give up everything for that. And I tell you, those ladies balk at it. And there comes a time when you kind of butt heads over it. You know what happens usually? The men follow their wives right out of church, and they don't go at all. I could give you case after case after case after case. And I want to tell you something. Much as you'd like to blame those ladies, it's not their fault. It is not their fault. Because men are supposed to be holy men of God, praying everywhere, lifting up blameless hands. And as that man says, I'm going to leave my home, and he contends with his wife for it, she says, there's blood on your hands. You promised, and you didn't do this. You know, we made a decision. We both promised God when we got married that this was going to be, and we've never done that. And she can just point out and 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 point out. And there's no way in the world he can leave because he's not holy. Men, if you will not be holy, you will not be able to save your family. I'm telling you, man, if you will not be what God wants you to be, you'll lose your wife, and I, she may not leave you, but you won't be able to lead her, and she won't be holy. You'll lose your children. They'll be just like you. 
They'll be living for the flesh. And if they grace the doors of the church, friend, it will not mean that they're lifting up holy hands. I want to just mention a few reasons that I think that ladies don't lead. First of all, I, I think that uh, ladies don't follow our leadership as men because we're not holy in an unnatural way. We need to be holy in an unnatural way. Listen, when she finds out that you love the Lord and that your relationship with the Lord is real, how is she going to do that? Let's get practical. Let's get, oh, we're over on time. Let's get nuts and bolts on this before we finish this morning. Men, if I had to ask you to raise your hand, how many of you this week had a family altar in which you acted as priest in your home and you sat your wife down and you taught her what you were learning in the Scripture on a daily basis? If I had to ask you that question, I'm afraid that we'd be embarrassed. And if my wife next door were to ask the ladies how many, many of them led a family altar, you'd probably be more even, even further embarrassed. And it's your responsibility to teach in your home. And it is not that your ladies cannot be godly ladies like, uh, like Timothy's mother and grandmother. But friend, it's your job to teach your family.